Hey folks, and welcome back to Shout Esports. I'm Jess Brohard, and here's what's been going on lately in esports news. First up, ESPN made the difficult decision to shut down its esports division. In a statement, the sports news giant said, We recognize esports as an opportunity to expand our audience, and will continue to do so through coverage from the broader team for major events, breaking news, and coverage. In other words, ESPN itself will still be providing some esports coverage alongside its traditional sporting news. However, ESPN Esports as an entity sadly no longer exists. This news came shortly after ESPN laid off 300 employees due to the pandemic's effect on the way fans are consuming sports. Moving on, TSM has signed Sword Art to its League of Legends division in a two-year, $6 million contract giving him what is believed to be the highest salary in the LCS and indeed of any pro gamer in North America. TSM founder Andy Din says it was Sword Art's performance at Worlds, where he led his team Sooning to the finals, that clinched his highly paid position on TSM. This spot on the team was open in part because of our next news. Doublelift has retired from competitive League of Legends. The veteran player, arguably one of the most talented in the North American scene, announced his retirement in a heartfelt Twitter post, thanking fans for supporting him in his decade-long career and asking them to continue supporting him in his, quote, new chapter of life. He says that he's glad he was able to bring so many people entertainment and help them enjoy competitive league. Though after spending a third of his life as a pro, he did not drop any hints as to what this next chapter of his life might hold. Many retired pros go on to have successful careers as coaches or managers, so I want to hear from you on what you think Doublelift is going to do next. Tweet me at Jess Brohard and let me know what your predictions are for Doublelift's next moves. In other retirement news, Fortnite pro Issa, one of the game's most accomplished controller players, has also announced his retirement due to nerve damage in his hand after injuries sustained in a car accident. He said, as many of you know, I signed with an org and was going to try content creation, but it just doesn't work with my hand. I appreciate every single one of you that supported me on my journey over the past three years, and I'm very grateful for all of you. I had the best time of my life and became one of the best, which has always been my dream. The 19-year-old superstar says that he will continue to stream once in a while and, quote, focus on other stuff and do his thing. It's not clear yet exactly what he'll be doing, but the former Ghost Gaming player is sure to have a bright future, even if it's not spent competing on the sticks. Next, Chicago could soon be calling itself home to a $30 million esports venue called Surge. Located on the city's near south side, the 106,000 square foot venue would serve food and drinks and house 800 spectators to watch the competitions. Real estate visionary Scott Greenberg, leading this proposed project, says that what they're doing is not like anything else in the world as far as esports stadiums. The eSports Stadium in Arlington, Texas, and the HyperX eSports Arena in Las Vegas might beg to differ with that statement, but I am all for another eSports venue, especially one that's located centrally in the Midwest. But what Greenberg says will really make Surge unique is a 35-foot tall, 85-foot wide video canvas, similar to an IMAX film, that will make the audience feel as if they are inside the game. It'll also include suite-like areas, where fans can watch the action and order food and drinks right to their table. If everything goes according to plan, Surge would be slated to open by summer 2022. Moving right along, Microsoft has acquired tournament platform Smash.gg. After gaining popularity around Super Smash Bros. events, Smash.gg, like many companies, suffered during the ongoing pandemic, and rumors began circulating that the platform may have to shut down. This move ensures Smash.gg's future will be bright, bolstered by Microsoft's strong backing, and also seems like a huge win for Microsoft in the wake of their recent Mixer shutdown. Finally, those of you who have been eagerly awaiting the North American arrival of competitive Valorant, wait no longer. The Valorant First Strike North America event took place starting on December 3rd, and eight teams who made it through qualifying tournaments duked it out for their piece of the $100,000 prize pool. The competition was steep, with Team Envy, Renegades, Immortals, TSM, 100 Thieves, Sentinels, T1, and FaZe Clan competing. That's all I have for you this episode, but be sure to check out GameInformer.com and the Game Informer YouTube channel for more videos just like this one. Our next episode of Shout Esports beginning in January will focus on how to begin creating gaming content, tips for starting your stream, how to get viewers and be entertaining, and why you should keep up the energy and not get discouraged when viewership or chat activity is low. 
Once again, I'm Jess Brohard, and you can watch my streams at twitch.tv slash Jess, or leave me some feedback on my social media at Jess Brohard, and I'll catch you next time. Yeah.